Hi, welcome to another session of basic electrical and electronics engineering. In today's class three, under DC machines, we are going to see different numericals, that is, problems and solutions based on EMF equation of generator. So, in the past classes, we have seen the construction details of generator. Now, let us see the problems which are involved, especially with lap winding and Wave winding. So, in the past class, we have seen the construction details, see the EMF equation, the direction of the current, plumbing's right hand rule, plumbing's left hand rule, also the EMF generated in the machine, which is given by phi P and Z by 16 to A, where P is the number of poles, N is the speed, Z is the number of conductors, A is the parallel path. Also, we have to keep in your mind what exactly the concept details consists of. You have a yoke which is the outer frame. You have the field windings which are placed on the poles. The poles are supported by pole shoe such that the windings on, placed on the poles should not fall on the rotating part of the machine. The rotating part of the machine, uh, when you are talking about the direction of the current which is flowing from higher potential to the lower potential, uh, consists of the shaft, the armature, the commutator, which the entire uh, machine is supported by brush contacts where you are going to collect the current. See this construction details we have seen in our past classes and also the working principle which has given us the information that a DC machine converts mechanical energy into electrical energy and that machine is regarded as DC generator. So, according to the Faraday's law of electromagnetic induction, if the conductors placed in the armature are rotated externally in the magnetic field and EMF is induced in it. This EMF causes a current to flow which is already in nature and you can convert the current into your unidirectional with the help of commutator. So, how this is done? That is done with the help of commutator and armature. The induced EMF is given by E is equal to 5 P and Z by 16 to A. So, these things which we have seen in the past classes, let us go into the depth of the topic. So, the actual armature are said to have armature core which is cylindrical in shape and is made up of laminated sheet steel. It consists of large number of slots into which armature conductors are placed. The armature conductors are connected to each commutator segment and commutator converts alternating current induced in the armature conductors into unidirectional current across the pressures. If at all you take the cross-sectional view of the rotating part of the machine, you have the armature core which is this particular part. You have commutator which is this particular part which is shown in green cylindrical structure and you have a shaft. If the shaft rotates in clockwise, the commutator and the armature, they rotate in the same direction. In the armature core, you have these armature slots shown by these divisions of blue lines where you can play the armature windings which are shown by this red conductors. So, exactly what is this armature windings? The way in which the armature conductors are connected to the commutator segments are classified into two types, lap winding, wave winding. Lap winding, the armature windings are connected in series through commutator segments in such a way that the armature winding is divided into as many parallel paths as the number of poles. Once we are going to solve the problem, you will understand this particular statement. If there are Z conductors and P poles, there will be P parallel paths, each containing Z by P conductors in series. For example, you have a two commutator segments and you have the coils which are connected between these commutator segments as the outgoing conductor 
and incoming conductor. So this particular type of connection or on which windings under lap winding is said to be single turn coin. For example, you have two computer segments which are having the connections to the armature in such a way that on the left side you have three conductors, on the right side you have three conductors where one resembles as north and one resembles as south. So this type of connection you can regard as a three turn coil. Likewise, you can have n turn coils for different type of connections. So generally we employ progressive lap winding where you have this type of commutator segments which are connected to the armature winding placed on the armatures. The conclusion is the total EMF is equal to the EMF generated in any one of the parallel paths. So this type of connection generally we employ for low voltage and high current machines. Next is the wave winding connection. Here the armature conductors are connected in series through commutator segments in such a way that the armature winding is divided into two parallel paths irrespective of the number of poles. For example, if there are Z conductors, then Z by 2 conductors will be in series in each parallel path. We have E is equal to 5 pn Z by 16 into A. The total EMF is equal to the EMF generated in any one of the parallel paths. The total armature current divides equally between two parallel paths and this type of wave winding connection generally we employ for high voltage and low current machines. If at all you want to look at the wave winding connection, this is how it looks like. So it has taken the form of a sinusoidal. If at all you take a overview, it's a kind of wave type of nature. That's why this type of connection is known as wave winding connection. Let us go with an example. In example 1, you have a 6 pole lap wound armature having 720 conductors and a flux per pole which is equal to 0.02 Webers. If this particular connection of machine is running at 800 RPM, what is the value of EMF generated in that particular machine? So first, you collect the data which is given in the problem. We have poles which is 6, we have the speed which is 800 rpm, the number of conductors which is 720, the flux per pole which is 0.02 Weber. Now we have to calculate the generated EMF. So for lap wound machine, we have the number of parallel paths equal to the number of poles. In this case, it is equal to 6. So E equal to 5 pnz by 16 to A. Substitute the values which are given in the problem. You have 5 which is value equal to 0 0.02, P value is 6, N value is 800, Z value is 720, 60 is the numerical and A is the also equal to 6 because it's a lap point machine. For this, the value of E will be equal to 192 volts. So this is the value of generated voltage for this particular problem. Let us go with another problem. A small mistake is done over here. This is problem number two, where you have a four pole wave on machine having 540 conductors, which runs at 880 RPM. Now, here the generated voltage is given to be 700. We need to calculate the flux per pole, and it is known as useful flux per pole. So, like in the previous case, how we have solved the problem, first to take the parameters which are given. So the poles are 4, speed is 880 rpm, Z is 540 conductors, generated voltage here is 700. Okay. So for a wave wound armature, the parallel path is fixed that is equal to 2. Okay. Since we have E is equal to 5 pnz by 16 to A, so the value of flux per pole can be obtained which is equal to E multiplied with 60, multiplied with number of parallel paths, whole divided by number of poles, 
multiplied with speed and number of conductors. So I am substituting the values of the given parameters and I am going to obtain the value of flux per pole which is equal to 0.44 Webers. I hope you understood the lag winding and wave winding connections. Now let us go with the example 3 where you have a DC generator of lab bomb connected having 120 slots with 10 conductors per slot generates an EMF of 600 volts at no load conditions at 800 rpm. What speed should the machine be rotated to generate a voltage of 200 volts on no load conditions? So take the parameters, we have here number of slots of on armature which is equal to 120 and conductors per slot is equal to 10. The generated voltage here is 600 volts, the speed is 800 rpm. This is the first data. So the total number of conductors on armature which is stated as Z which will be equal to number of slots on armature multiplied with the conductors per slot. So 120 into 10 will give you the value of Z which is equal to 1200. So this is the total number of conductors placed on the armature. Let me remind you for lap winding connection, the number of parallel paths is equal to the number of poles. So here A will be equal to B. Since we have E is equal to 5B and Z by 16 into A where P is equal to A or A equal to P, therefore EG will be equal to 5 and Z by 60. In fact, EG value is also given as 600. We need to find out the value of phi, that is the flux for the first condition. So here, flux per pole will be equal to 0.0375 Webers. So this is the first case which we have obtained because on this phi condition, the machine is reduced to a speed of Sorry, the machine is reduced to a voltage of 200 volts. We need to calculate the speed for the same no load conditions. So, 5V, which is not given, that is being determined, that is the flux per pole. Now, when the generator voltage is reduced to 200 volts and phi value is 0.0375 Webers. From the equation under lab condition, EG is equal to phi and Z by 60, the N value is obtained to be 267 RPM. So you can see from the problem, the machine when it is running with 800 RPM and it was generating a 600 volts, the flux obtained to be 0.0375 Webers with the same flux. If the voltage is reduced to 200 volts, what will be the speed? That is the exact question which is asked under no load condition. So for that, we obtain the speed which is reduced to 267 RPM. So this is how we solve different problems based on the generated voltage on generated with lap winding and wave winding. For a practice session, I am giving you a fourth question where a four pole lap connected armature has 1200 conductors and a flux of 80 millivebers per pole and has a speed of 600 rpm. Find the EMF generated. Continuing the problem. If instead of lap winding, the above problem is type of wave winding with the same parameters that is 1200 conductors with the same flux and speed, then calculate the generated voltage in the machine. Please, whatever the answer which you got, comment in the chat box and stay connected to my channel. Uh, today we are done with the class 3. I hope you like this video. Please share among your friends and subscribe to my channel. Press the bell icon for the future notification.